Good morning, Shannon. How are you doing today? Good morning, Melody. I'm very excited. Good. I wonder what you might be excited about today. <sighs> Melanie, it's the most fantastic time of the year. Oh, you mean like summertime at the beach? No. <laughs> what time of the year is it, Shannon? It's tax season. Oh, I have to admit that that <laughs> proclamation doesn't give me as much excitement as it seems to give to you. <laughs> oh, but there are so many wonderful reasons to update our taxes. Oh, and here we are, middle of March, six weeks to go till the deadline for filing taxes for 2020. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, every time at about this time of year, I get nervous. I start worrying about it. I usually kind of like procrastinate till the very last minute because there is not a whole lot about filing taxes that I really enjoy. Why do you feel nervous, Melanie? You know, it's overwhelming for me. There's a lot involved. I don't have very good um, knowledge about it. I try to do it on my own, um, which that's where that no, um, confusion and lack of knowledge and overwhelming feeling comes from. And mm. yet when I've tried to take it to somebody to get them to do it, um, it's, it's costed more than I would like to pay out of pocket. So it's just a whole bunch of, for me, barriers and worries and concerns and, and um, lack. I just, I feel like I don't ha uh, need, have what I need to really get it done and be excited about it. I can understand that. Yeah. It can all be a little bit intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, Shannon, I know you have a very different perspective of it. And I am so excited that you're here today to talk to us about some of the ways in which we can make this a more uh, an easier, more comfortable, more successful endeavor mm -hmm. every, every April at around, yeah, every April of the year during tax filing season. So I'm excited that you're sharing your knowledge with us today. Oh, it's the greatest thing ever, Melanie. It truly is. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about, you know, what do you think that the benefits of filing taxes are? I mean, you know, why should we go through all of that every year? Oh, there are so many benefits. So many. <laughs> uh, for example, uh, you get money back. <laughs> yeah. So some folks will get a tax um, mm -hmm payback, I can't, yep. a refund, sorry. Yes, like there the are first... lots of different ways to get money back from the Canada Revenue Agency. Okay, tell us a little bit about that. Well, like you said, sometimes it's a tax refund. Yeah. Sometimes we earn an income and mm -hmm. we get money back when we file taxes. Yeah. So, technically, or sorry, not technically, usually people who are on a set income, a fixed yes. income like AISH, Yep. They generally wouldn't get money back That's true. From, a, from a refund, but I mm -hmm. hear that there's other kind of financial perks to filing Perhaps. your taxes. Filing taxes is good for everyone, whether you're earning a million dollars a month or no dollars a month. Mm. So people on social benefits or a fixed income, there's a lot of good reasons to, to file things. One okay. reason is yeah. people get GST checks back a lot of the time. Yeah. That is nice to, and, and those come out every three months or four months? Every quarter. So every yep. three four. months? I can't do the math. <laughs> every four months. And that's a nice perk so that every four months you get a little extra cash to mm -hmm. help to pay off those bills or debts or even get, you know, something special. Yep. Absolutely. And so what are some of the other um, perks to filing taxes? The Climate Action Initiative. Okay, I've never heard of that one. Mm. Yep, that is a thing. It's um, this, this year, it's $490 for single people in Alberta, I think. Okay. And it's just something that we get because it's a, a tax rebate and... So all you have to do is file your taxes and you're yep. automatically put in for that benefit. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So for the average person on a fixed income, that's yeah. at that with GST, that's like 800, 
Wow. Extra for really you? Yes. yes. Nice. Okay. That's definitely a, a good reason to file taxes. Yep. So there are a lot of tangible benefits. Um, another great benefit is the Canada workers benefit. Okay. So if you have a lower income, but you're working a little bit, mm -hmm. sometimes you're in that right bracket of being able to get the Canada workers benefit and get a couple extra hundred dollars there. Wow. Nice. So, mm -hmm. so again, it's just comes automatically to you if you're eligible just by submitting your taxes. Yep. Nothing fancy mm -hmm. to do. Lovely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, I also know that if people are eligible for the disability tax credit, that yep. helps out a little bit. And you and I have known some folks who didn't know about the t disability tax credit. So they applied, they mm -hmm. were found to be eligible. And because yep. it's retroactive, Yes, they were able to get um, a bundle of money from, you know, backdated from the years in which they were eligible, but never claimed mm -hmm. it. Yes, the disability tax credit is a fantastic thing that's unique to Canada and not uh -huh. enough people know about it. Right. Um, the disability tax credit is a type of tax credit for people who have significant long term medical conditions and disabilities, basically. Yes. Um, and how do you find out more about it? We'll have some links, but also talk to your doctor. It can't oh. hurt to have a conversation to see if you're eligible. Right. Because it is a separate application form, isn't uh, it? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Okay. So talking to your doc or following some of the links that we're going to be providing at the end of um, today's session. Yes. And okay. once you qualify for that disability tax credit and you have it, it can be applied to your income situation. And sometimes that will result in a really big tax adjustment. Wow. And the other thing too is this is, I think this is right, right? Where once you apply for it and you're deemed eligible, mm -hmm. you don't have to reapply every year. Not every year, no. Okay, good. So it's I not mean, work every year. It, it's just a box you click on when you oh. file taxes. Oh, you, okay. You do need to flag that one separately, but it's it's really easy once you have it. Oh, okay. And, and then if you're working and you have the disability tax credit, you you pay less in taxes usually. Oh, nice, nice. That's another benefit. Yes, and there are so many benefits. So many. I can't I can't talk about all of them today. Wow. But here's a big one. Yeah. Once you have the disability tax credit, then you can open up at your bank what's called the registered disability savings account, which is a retirement account for people who have disabilities. Yes. Yes. And I've heard a little bit about that one. And what I really like about that one is if you're under a certain age, the yep. government will also contribute to that bank account. Yes. Which I love that. Who doesn't want free money? Right. I don't yeah. often get to say that, but it's legitimately <laughs> free money for your retirement once yeah. you set up that retirement account. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Grants and bonds, like the maximum um, just on grants and bonds alone, it can be $90,000 by in your whole lifetime. Wow. That's amazing. It takes a little bit of work to get, yeah. you know, to get um, processed and made sure you're eligible for that. But in the mm -hmm. long term, wow, what a benefit. And you can't get those things if you don't file your taxes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. So see, my discomfort and my anxiety is starting to lower just by focusing on what's, you know, what's, a, what's available, what, what the positives of doing. Ah, so focusing on the positives and having more knowledge is reducing your anxiety. Yes, ma'am. Oh, lovely. I know, right? Yeah, that's great. Um, the other thing that we were talking about was that Filing your taxes, um, soon after you file your taxes, you're sent a notice of assessment, mm -hmm. which is a yep. piece of paper that says you filed your taxes and this is what they've deemed you, um, you know, eligible mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. And that piece of paper can be a key to yes. other benefits, you were saying. Yes, 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 so many. It makes life so much easier. <sighs> Let me list the ways. Okay, thank you. The the Fair Entry Program in Calgary, which gets you all sorts of fantastic things like mm -hmm. uh, a rec card for reduced cost of things, like um, 
going to Village Square, going to the Calgary Zoo, yes. um, Fort Calgary, the Heritage Park. You pay a lot less if you have that fair entry assistance nice. card. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. You were saying also that it's um, a document that you need for eligibility for Calgary housing? They often ask for it, yes. Okay. And you do need to, in a lot of these cases, like with Calgary Housing or Meals on Wheels, they ask for the notice of assessment so that they know that you uh, fit their eligibility of, ah, this person has X amount of dollars to work with. And yes, we are able to serve them with this piece of paper. There is proof of that. Great. It, just, it either makes the process possible or a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose that that's how they um, decide on people's subsidy amount. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's rent, great. Rent supplement programs usually need that. Um, the free spay and neuter program with the fair entry card. You're, right. you're connected with that once you're part of the program. Right. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Okay, so there are lots of benefits out there for doing that. Yeah notice of assessment unlocks a lot of doors yeah and you don't get one if you don't file your taxes and plus for people with uh, social benefits a lot of the time their workers are asking for that notice of assessment in their annual age reporting or alberta works people do can ask for that to be submitted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. great yeah that's good to have that on hand for when your worker may ask for it yes it is. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So any more benefits that you wanted to bring to mind to bring to our attention today? Well, you mentioned something that is a barrier, actually. You said that you don't like paying for your to have someone else file your taxes or that it's too intimidating to do it yourself. Yep. For a lot of people, you can have it filed for free. Nice. Yep. Wow. By trained volunteers a lot of them are accountants in training or business people in training or retired accountants or just people that love filing taxes it's yeah. through the can or the community income tax volunteer program or cvitp okay we we talked a little bit about that during our last youtube video didn't we yep. um and i think you showed the screen mm-hmm and I don't remember if I put the link on, but I'll definitely put the link um, under the message or the description box of our YouTube video today. Mm -hmm. Because you can literally look up whatever city or town you're living in yep. and find out where the volunteer program is in your community. A lot of the time they operate out of libraries. Um, I know that the Sunrise Community Center has a fantastic one. Yes, Their volunteers right. are filing things remotely uh, through the phone. Right. And, oh, here's another barrier that people encounter. Sometimes yeah. they don't file taxes because they don't have their T forms. Like yeah. they don't have their paperwork. Yeah, yeah. Guess what? There's a solution. What? Auto filling. Okay, tell me about that. Oh, that's when the tax volunteer, once mm -hmm. you give the appropriate consent for them to do this, can auto fill your taxes. So that means their program can talk to the Canada Revenue Agency, import that information, even if you don't have your paperwork. So you can bypass a T4. Yep. Wow. Because the government has that information. And yep. so when you give permission to the volunteer tax yes. filer, they can mm -hmm. just get that, like upload mm -hmm. that information from the government. Yep. Tap, 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 Lovely. enter, submit, get information, file. That is beautiful. Takes five minutes. Whew, that takes the anxiety off a lot. <sighs> Yeah, you don't have to go searching for things. Um, yeah. Yeah, because a year's worth of paperwork is a lot to go searching for. And even to be able to track down a T4, like for people who have moved or, mm -hmm. um, you know, they're just not sure, you know, how to even connect with their, or they're afraid to connect with their, you know, former mm -hmm. employer or their former age worker or what, what have you. Yeah. Um, it can be a lot. It can be um, anxiety provoking as well as just overwhelming. Yeah, just trying to find all those bits of paper. Do you have them all? I don't know. There's there's a way through that. So yeah. simple. Nice. Lovely. 
So you have you seem to have a solution for every different barrier that somebody might be experiencing on their road to filing their taxes. So you've already talked about how some folks might feel um, kind of confused about like what to do and how to do it. Um, they might feel like they, you know, they don't have the money to pay for um, their taxes to get done, but they don't feel, you know, maybe um, comfortable enough doing it on their own, or they've just got a lot of anxiety around it. I think yep. these are very common feelings that people can have around any big task. And filing taxes is a big tax task. It is. It's, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of negative feelings around it. And it's something that we might have learned from watching others or learned things from when we were kids. Like I yeah. remember my parents being all stressed out about filing their taxes. And, yeah, you know, for the longest time, I didn't feel all that great about approaching that topic because I remembered my parents just being incredibly grumpy and stressed out. And I was like, well, I don't want anything to do with that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes we learn this response to a, a to a task but what i have found today even just talking with you is how beneficial it is to focus in on the positive to focus yes. in on the reward that can come by for for me having the courage and getting the resources that i need to get through a very difficult task there's that a solution to everything yeah and knowing and believing and rem remembering that there is there is a purpose at the end and there will be um, a benefit at the end of all of this. You know what I do to motivate myself to file my taxes? What? I think about what I'm going to do with the tax refund. Yeah. So everybody yes. has plans. They have goals. It's like when you get that money, whether it's GST or, or that refund or something, what are you going to do with it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, daydreaming about, about what that is and yeah because even going... if it's about paying off bills well then yeah. you've got a little little extra from what you would have paid off your bills from to save up and and maybe be able to buy yourself something special yeah reducing debt can be very rewarding because you don't feel yes. so stressed out about it yes <sighs> absolutely yeah um i think another that... thing yeah go ahead Another thing I like to do is just split it, split it in half. So save half of it, spend uh, half of it. Uh, okay. That's way there's an immediate reward for, aha, yeah. I have completed it. I have mm -hmm. this money. I'm going to do something nice for myself yeah. while also putting some money away for an emergency fund so that I'm yes. paying myself and protecting myself for the future. Yeah. You know, and even just um, like you were saying, there's definitely the rewards of a little extra financial freedom, but there's also rewards of being able to, hey, I did it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I got the help I needed. I got through my taxes. I was able to file them on time. There's a there's a sense of pr pride, a sense mm -hmm. of success and mastery. Now, especially during this time of COVID, during the pandemic, there is a lot of things that we cannot control. There's a lot of right. things that, you know, we just can't just kind of get, you know, work hard at and figure out, right? Mm -hmm. um, taxes is one thing that we can work on. So number one, it can give us something to do mm -hmm. in this time of pandemic when there's still quite a few things that are closed, Yep. Um, opening up, but still. Um, so it gives us something to do. It also, um, so it can set up a routine if we were to say, you know, I'm going to spend this weekend a couple hours a day just kind of getting everything together or connecting with that volunteer program scheduling a date so it can give us a routine mm -hmm. um, and then it can also when once we get through it give us a sense of mastery which is really important in our mental health during especially during a time when there's lots of things we can't control this so, is one thing that you can yeah this is a project that actually opens offers an opportunity for people to really just you know get through something and have success and benefits at the end in a world where you know we're not sure when the COVID-19 pandemic is going to end and we're uncertain about so much you know this can give us that opportunity to be certain about one thing I know that makes me feel happy yeah yeah the other thing that I want to just remind people about is like I find when I work when I'm talking with people that often we have this mentality of, 
well, everybody else seems to not have a problem with that. Like, so everyone else seems okay with filing their taxes. Everybody else seems like they're doing it no problem. But mm. that I don't, I think that's actually a cognitive distortion. I don't believe that's the truth. That's just something our brains tell us. In mm. fact, you know, just today, me being able to disclose how uncomfortable taxes makes me feel, hopefully can help people, you know, whoever's watching this YouTube video to feel comfort in knowing that you are not alone. Many people do not feel comfortable with taxes. They do not like filing taxes. They procrastinate till the last minute. Sometimes they just avoid it altogether for years on end yep. because of the uncomfortable feelings that it brings up for them. Yep. So, I talked to a lot of people like that. Yeah. Most, most people have that feeling and um, yeah, like one year, goes into two or three and then people kind of get stuck. It's like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. So knowing that you are not alone, that many of us feel the exact same way. And just like with COVID-19, we're all in like Canadians. Anyways, we're all in the same boat. We all have that April 30th deadline for yep. doing something that we don't necessarily feel very good at doing. But mm -hmm. there are resources out there. So focusing on what you can do, there are resources out there. For me also, I have to plan the day that I'm going to, or days that I'm going to work on my taxes very strategically. Mm -hmm. I want to do it on a day when I've got time and I'm feeling more relaxed. I don't want to just squish it in if I don't have to. Yep. I probably will make sure there's a few rewards around me like cookies or hot chocolate or something to keep me motivated and working on it. Mm -hmm. Um. So, you know, just being gentle with ourselves, being compassionate with ourselves and giving ourselves what we need to get through the task. If that's time, patience, gentleness, maybe a, a support person, a mm -hmm. little treat, a little treat on the side or, you know, the, well, if I do an hour of this with my taxes, then I'm going to go out for a nice refreshing walk, you know, yep. to pamper myself or a, or a relaxing bath. You know, those kinds of strategies can make the process a little bit easier. I've also found it useful to work in small bits, like do a task and just stop when I feel that sense of completion of, oh, I have found that document. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. So I thought I could offer a mindfulness to everybody that I think relates to doing taxes. What is it, Melanie? Well, you know, it's funny, Shannon, because even as we've been talking and I've been hearing the benefits of filing taxes, I still have noticed a little bit of tension in my mm. shoulders. And this is where I carry my worry, my nervousness about mm -hmm. stuff. So that makes me remember that I can be purposeful in my relaxation, not only of my mind, but also of my body. So mm -hmm. I'd really like to offer people a progressive muscle relaxation today. We've done this sort of thing before, but it's been a while. So I think it might be, you know, good to, to try one again. Especially when filing your taxes may mean sitting on a chair, you know, at a computer for, or at a table, you know, over a bunch of papers for a long period of time. Or it might mean being on the phone or, you know, looking things up on the internet, or it might even be connecting with a volunteer, you know, in a place like a library where, you know, especially these days, it's a, different kind of place to be with different kinds of safety protocols and a mm. total stranger. Um, and all of that can, can cause anxiety. It can cause confusion or nervousness. It can be really uncomfortable for people. So, you know, intentionally relaxing our minds and our bodies can be very helpful in moving through that process. I find that's true. Yeah. All right. Well, are you into it today? Progressive, meal, re, re, progressive muscle relaxation? Yes, absolutely. Guide All me through right. it. All right, let's do it then. So people might want to be on a chair, sitting on a chair or relaxing on the floor, um, laying on the floor or on a couch, whatever um, is more comfortable for you. Um, this is also a really good relaxation for um, bedtime because it does relax your body. Um, and so people might want to even try it out um, um, when they're in their bed late, um, at bedtime. So just starting by closing your eyes or keeping them open and just, you know, gently keeping your uh, eyes open on something that's in front of you that won't move or distract you. But I'm going to close my eyes for this one. And just taking some breaths, keeping your breath simple, not changing it in any way. 
just noticing how your breath comes in and out of your body. You might notice how the body has, has a rhythm. As the breath comes in, your body responds by the belly moving upwards and outwards a little bit. Maybe your shoulders move up a bit. And then as you're breathing out, that belly flattens and the shoulders relax downward a bit. Whatever you notice in your body, acknowledging that that's your rhythm and that your body has a way of breathing itself, even when you're not paying attention. And that that is perfectly okay. That's your body doing its job. So focusing in on the breath as the anchor of your awareness. And if you notice that your mind is tending to be distracted by noises or thoughts or feelings, then just acknowledge those. Know that they're there. And that's okay. And then gently bring your attention back to your breath so that you can focus in on this present moment, moment by moment, as it occurs. Now slowly bringing your attention to the toes, the tips of your toes. Noticing what they feel like. Breathing into them. Then slowly and at your leisure, if you're able to, scrunching up your toes and feeling that pressure that is made by scrunching your toes together. Holding it for a little bit, just for a couple of seconds to feel that tension and that pressure in your toes. And then releasing it. Feeling that blood flowing back into the tips of your toes. And the relief and relaxation that comes from that. And with every breath, in and out, imagining your toes relaxing just a little bit further. Then moving to your ankles, feeling your ankles as they are, noticing any, noticing any tension. And then purposely and intentionally creating pressure in your ankles. That might be from raising your feet up Feeling that pressure in your ankles. Feeling the stretch, holding it for a few moments longer and then letting it go. Feeling as the blood rushes back into your ankles and into your feet and that sense of softening and relaxation. Moving up again into your calves Noticing how they are at this moment with any tenderness or any tension. And then purposely and intentionally squeezing your calves together, creating pressure, pressure in the muscles, tensing them as tightly as you can and holding it for a moment, another moment, and then releasing that tension feeling as your calves and your muscles just gently relax back into the position. Feeling any differences with your joints or your muscles, or your tendons from before you relax them to after. And moving up your calves into your thighs I always like to rub my hands on my thighs as a way of connecting with them. Sensing any tenderness or any tension in your thighs as they are. And then intentionally squeezing your thighs together, squeezing the muscles and the tendons in your thighs to create pressure and tension, holding it for a moment in another moment and then softening your thighs and letting it all go. 
relaxing them and feeling the difference with your breath in and out, maybe allowing your thighs to relax even deeper into the surface that you're sitting on. Now moving up into your belly, noticing how your belly is feeling right now, any tension or tenderness. Taking a deep breath in and out. And then whatever way you can, tensing your belly, squishing those muscles together, maybe pulling your belly all the way as close as you can into your back, squeezing it in, holding it for a moment and another moment. And then letting your belly relax, letting it all go. Breathing into that space again. And feeling the difference between tense muscles and relaxed muscles. Letting the breath come in, creating more space and relaxation into the stomach. And then moving up your belly into your chest. Feeling how your chest is now, any pressure or tension that may already exist. Thinking about your chest. And then intentionally bringing tension to your chest. It might be a sucking in of the air or a pulling in of the shoulders, somehow making tension and pressure in the chest. Feeling that tightening for one moment and then another moment and then letting it all go. Again, breathing into that part of the body, allowing that breath to bring more and more relaxation and softness into the chest and noticing the difference between your, your chest before the tension and after the tension. Moving to your shoulders, feeling any tension or soreness that your shoulders may already be holding. And then slowly and intentionally bringing pressure and tension into the shoulders, perhaps by pulling them up as close to your ears as you possibly can, scrunching them up for a moment and then holding it for another moment. And then gently letting your shoulders go and relax. Again, taking a breath and breathing that into the shoulder area to soften and relax even further. And feeling whatever comes up for you. Now coming to the face, the lower part of the face, the jaw, a lot of folks hold tension in the jaw, noticing your jaw and the state that it's in right now, the tension, the tenderness. And then creating some tension in the jaw can be tricky. You might want to clench your teeth a little bit, but not too much to, to avoid injury. Or you may want to make a big smile that creates tension in the jaw as well. So however you choose to do it, just for a moment, creating some tension and pressure in the jaw. Holding it for another moment and then letting it go. Feeling that tension drain away, the softness and the relaxation returning to your jaw. And then bringing our attention up to the eyes and the forehead. Feeling already what the eyes and the forehead are carrying. Are they carrying relaxation or tension, tiredness, or burden? Whatever they're carrying, just noticing it for a moment. And then when you're ready, 
creating tension in that area of the body, squishing the eyes together, bringing your eyebrows down, your forehead scrunched up into you, into your um, into your nose or your third eye, just scrunching and creating that tension and pressure for a moment, and then another moment, and then letting it all go relaxing and softening the forehead, the nose, the eyes. And breathing in to bring more and more softness to that part of your face, allowing it to soften just another millimeter more every time you bring a breath in and out. Lastly, we'll bring attention to the top of our head just noticing what's there, the top of your head, the scalp. And then, however best you can, bringing intention to the tensing of your scalp. Bringing, your, bringing tension to the scalp by pressing it in. Sometimes this just takes intention. There may not be any muscles in your scalp that you have control over at the top of your head, but just bringing the intention of squeezing those muscles together, creating some pressure for a moment, and then another moment, and then slowly releasing. And if you could imagine that releasing of relaxation and softness melting from your head all the way down your face, through your shoulders, down your arms, your chest, and your belly, down your legs and your toes. Like as if there's a soft rain coming from the sky, anointing your head and just moving all the way down to flush out all the tension. Scanning your body for any other remaining parts of tension or achiness or crankiness. Breathing through those parts. Breathing in relaxation, breathing out tension. And then as we come to an end of this mindfulness practice, slowly bringing your attention more and more to the noises around you, to the light of the room coming through your eyelids, maybe moving in whatever way feels comfortable for you, and then slowly opening your eyes and returning to this conversation. Hmm. I totally feel like I could have a nap now. Mm, yeah. <laughs> this would be maybe a good uh, mindfulness for before somebody sits down to look at their taxes or afterwards as a way of, you know, honoring the work that we've put into something that can be fairly challenging uh, and to give ourselves that muscle relaxation to calm. I know I sometimes clench my hands and feet even without knowing it. Ah, okay. Like clench and release? Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, it's like reminding myself to just wiggle my fingers and toes, even during a meeting. It's like, that can be useful. Totally. I totally agree with that. Yeah. It brings you a sense of connection with your body, gives your body a little body break by tensing the muscles. Yeah, and it kind of takes you away from the conversation just for a moment. So it gives you a mind break too. Mm -hmm. And I realized during that mindfulness that I forgot to do our arms and our, our uh, hands. So that's something that you could definitely include in that mindfulness when you practice it on your own. Well, I think Shannon's frozen for a few minutes. I've lost her. There you are again. 
I'm back. <laughs> I lost you for a few moments. I exist. I have external validation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Hooray. Yes. Well, Shannon, it's been wonderful. I thank you so much for your enjoy your excitement, sharing your positivity around taxes and all the beautiful benefits. Have fun, people. Yes. <laughs> yes, everybody. Or try have to. That's right. Yes. Good luck in the next six weeks getting that done. We know you can do it. Focus on the positive. You can do Focus it. Focus on the benefits. Yay. We're going to cheer you on. You got this. You got this. <laughs> Happy dance. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Shannon. Take care. Have a great week, everybody.